Hello. Today I'm going to give a code walkthrough for one of the most important ultramestering sample applications for Java, LBM source. I'm going to focus on the six most important parts of the code, from creating the different objects and passing in options, to sending messages and then cleaning up the objects at the end. So let's jump straight into the code itself. The LBM source, as with all Java standalone applications, the entry point is the main method. And here we can see inside the main method, we're just creating an object of the external class itself, LBM source, and passing in the command line objects. So if I follow the code into the constructor, I can see that the first object that's created is of type LBM. So I'm creating an LBM utility class. Now the utility class is used for two main things, setting up the logging and also being able to load in configuration files. We can see in this sample application that we're using the log4j logging and so we go through the process of setting up that logging object and then we pass in the object using the setLogger method on the utility class. The next stage then is to process the command line arguments. If we go into here, um, there are many command line arguments so I'm not going to go through the details of all of them. I'm just going to focus on the most important, which is loading in an LBM configuration file. Um, you can do this by adding in the C command line argument. And the code this actually calls is a static call on the utility class to set configuration. And we're just passing in the file name here of the file. Yeah. So I'm now going to step back. There are two main ways to load in configuration options. We've just seen how to load in a full configuration file, but we can also create attribute objects themselves. So for this case, for LBM source, we're going to use the LBM source attributes and the LBM context attributes. And we can see down here the programmatic way that we set them. So if we want to set a source attribute, we call the object, set property, the name of the property, so in this case the transport, and then the value. So it's always a name value pair. In this case, the property is transport and the value is LBTRU. So we're selecting reliable unicast. You can then see us processing some of the other command line arguments, setting up different options, setting up the recycler, which we'll talk about another time. And then we see the LBM context being created. So it's called CTX in this case. And when we create the LBM context object, we're going to pass in our context attributes. The context attributes will also be taken in from the file which we specified. So we create the context attributes, then we create the context object, and now we can create an LBM topic. The simplest way to do this is then to call the allocate topic function on the context and pass in a topic name and here then we're seeing we pass in the source attributes and what we get returned is a new topic which we can save so now we've created our context and source attributes we've created a context object and we've created the topic the last thing we do is we create the LBM source itself and again to set up the source, if I scroll down slightly further, we can see that we're calling the create source function on the context object. We're going to pass in our newly created topic and our source callback, which we'll talk about now. In this case, we've got no callback object and no event queue, so we leave those as null. So this is a very quick walkthrough of creating the source and context attributes, creating a context object, then the topic and then we can create the source itself. The bit that we just bypassed then was creating a source callback. If we look, we can see here that in fact this is um, another class in the same file. If I click on it, we can see the source callback. The important thing is that it implements the LBM source event callback. We don't need to handle the events if we don't want to, but it's always a good idea to. So in our source event callback, the important 
function which we must override is on source event. So we must implement this function. In this case, we're handling three the three main events. So what happens if we receive a source event connect, a source event disconnect, and a source event wake up? In this case, we're either just printing out messages or unblocking the source. I'm now going to step back. I create the source callback and move further down the code. And we should be able to see what various of the different options like creating channels, etc., setting up statistics, setting up monitoring. But where we want to get to is the ability to actually send messages now and see how that happens. See all of the different flags that can be set up and all of the different blocking, which is very important and very well worth studying. But here we can see the source and the actual send call made on that source itself. So we create the context and the topic, and we use those to create our source, and it's the send call we actually make on the source itself. And we can pass in various options, various flags that can be set either to flush the message immediately, setting up blocking or non-blocking, etc. Once we've finished sending our messages, we must make sure that we then clean up after ourselves. So when you're finished with the source, we should close it down, and then we should always close our context. Now, bear in mind, you can leave your context up and start up multiple sources, and even if there are no sources active that you know you'll be using some later, you can keep your context object alive. In terms of performance, it's normally a good idea to reuse the same context object. That was a very quick run through of the LPM source sample applications. You can find more preliminary information in the knowledge base video how to compile and run Java Ultra Messaging sample apps with Eclipse. Please let us know your feedback. Thank you very much for listening.